Now that the alleged Brooklyn subway shooter is in custody, there are a lot of questions about what led up to his arrest. It took about 30 hours to find and arrest Frank James. And let's welcome in once again Joe Sullivan, former deputy commissioner of the Philadelphia Police Department. Sir, thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me. Okay, so let's talk about Frank James, okay? Because it's been a 30 hours of, of, of just trying to be on the run here. He, he was trying to blend in in plain sight there. He was spotted at McDonald's. He probably felt like he was being hunted down by the NYPD because he was. Uh, and he called him. He called Crime Stoppers on himself. Uh, talk about the psyche uh, of somebody like that and, and f him feeling the heat. Well, it speaks to the tactics that were used by the NYPD. They didn't withhold information. They, they, once they knew that he had concrete involvement in this case, they got his identity out there. And they were careful to, to identify him as a person of interest until they had the probable cause that, that would have justified making him a suspect. And he felt that. He, he realized that there was nowhere that he could hide. And in the, in his, it was in his best interest to call the police, and that's what he did. And Joe, can you speak to how rare it is for a situation like this, the subject of an intense manhunt, to not only, you know, be taken into custody alive, but to have called the authorities himself? It, it seems like this doesn't happen very often. Well, it doesn't, but it does happen in those cases where uh, law enforcement really does a good job of getting that message out, of, of making it the proper use of, of all modes of the media to get that message out there so that person just feels like they have nowhere to go. They feel paranoid that everyone's looking at them, everyone's uh, able to identify them, and they just make the decision. I mean, this is a classic case of really good, hard, old-fashioned detective work combined with the use of technology to bring this case in. And the public's help, too, and all the tips that came in, I know. And, and the frustrating thing about this, Joe, is, is this is a lone wolf. He was set out to hurt people and kill people, and you know he wasn't successful on the ladder. But you you can't really prevent this. That's the frustrating thing here. How do you prevent somebody like this man doing something like this in the future? Well, we have to do a really deep dive sentinel review. We have to look at this person's history, all of his court cases, his mental health history, his treatment or lack thereof, to find out whether at some point should he have been held in. And one of the problems we have in, the, in this country is we have an underfunded mental health system where, although our population continues to grow and the number of beds available, the people that are suffering from mental health continues to go down. And that's certainly something that has to be looked at. Um, he, he really foreshadowed his intention um, on social media. Uh, we have to kind of wonder why that wasn't picked up. He was a uh, subject of a guardian with the FBI in 2019. We have to go back and look at it all. Not because we're so much trying to fix blame, but we're trying to identify, did we miss certain tripwires? Right. And was there a way we could have prevented this from happening or prevent something similar from happening in the future? But you said it, um, the, the bottom line, it comes down to a, an, an engaged, educated public willing to call the police when they see something out of place, when they see someone they know that's wanted by the police. Yeah, and his history, it seems there's so much for investigators to go through in, in the coming weeks and months, I'm sure. Joe Sullivan, thank you so much for joining us in studio today. My Appreciate pleasure. It.